What does the Word of God say to the situation that we're living in today? The situation of owing $14 trillion as a debt. The situation of losing jobs. The situation that money's worth nothing. What does the Word of God say about God's people? How should we respond? It says that we should shine like stars in this wicked and perverse generation. That Jesus has called us the light of the world and that we should shine like stars. As things get darker and darker in our era, in our days, we should shine like stars. In 1990, I was given words by the Lord, so I believe. And these words were very simple. They started off by saying, as the horseman holds on to the horn of the saddle, so I call you to hold on to me, for the world is about to be shaken. The world is about to be shaken. In 1990, that seemed ever so crazy. The world is about to be shaken. In 1997, I received a vision. Coming home from a pilgrimage, and I saw the Titanic sinking. And I saw the lifeboats and they couldn't get the people onto the, onto the lifeboats. And I knew that in 1997 that the Titanic was the world economic system it was going into the drink. I didn't even know there was a world economic system. I thought that we had our economy, and uh, Italy had her economy, and France had her economy. But I knew it was the world economic system going into the drink. In 2010, these are the things that are happening. The economy of the world is going into the drink. The economy of the West is going into the drink. We bailed Greece out. Now Spain and Portugal are in deep trouble. We owe $14 trillion. And how are we to respond if craziness breaks out? You have to remember, the study with my generation, that we have had everything. We've never wanted for anything. You have to remember that. Everything we've ever wanted, we've got. We've turned from God to materialism. When I was a child, I'm going to tell you, People knew their neighborhood by their parish church. I go to Sacred Heart. Oh, I go to St. Brendan's. In 2010, people don't even know where the parish church is anymore. That's real. That's real. We have, we have fled from the gospel. We have fled from the Lord Jesus Christ. We have been sold out to materialism. Uh, let's look at Poland. Let's look at the country of Poland. What communism could not do to Poland, materialism has done. Communism could not break down the faith of Poland. But now that they have everything, I will tell you even what happens in Poland. The church attendance has fallen off. I went to a certain place in Poland. The priest said only 13% of the parish comes to church. 13%. Where's the other 87%? I guess they're home with their VCRs and VCDs or whatever they have and uh, their computers and uh, they're at the malls, worshiping at the malls. Also in Poland, People come to the rectory 
and say, I, I want you to take my name off the baptismal le record. I'm not a Catholic anymore. I don't want to be even associated with being a Catholic. Isn't it interesting what communism couldn't do, materialism has done. Now let's play this game. What happens if all the things that we are used to having, all the food we need, dinners out, take out, we don't have the money to support it. What happens? Will we loot? Do you remember what happened with Katrina? Do you remember what happened with Hurricane Katrina? The looting that took place? How are we to respond in these dark and perilous times? To shine like stars? to hold on to Jesus, to give our life anew to the Heavenly Father through His Son, Jesus Christ. How are we to respond? To respond in faith. In 1990, I remember the Lord saying, now again, I don't know if it was the Lord, but I will tell you what I, what I spoke and what I heard. I heard that there would be looting. I heard that there would be a very difficult time with people getting food, 1990. Now I know that sounds crazy. In 1990 it sounded very crazy. But I have people calling me saying I have no food. A woman called us just two days ago. I have no food. I stock up on chicken. 49 cents a pound at Save-A-Lot. We filled two or three bags. We brought it down to her home. The person who brought it down said this lady had nothing in her house. People have come and said, you know, my children have nothing to eat. We have nothing to eat. Multiply that. We who have been used to so much, and then it stops. How do we respond? Do we respond on our knees? I'm going to tell you, we forgot on our knees many years ago. There aren't many people who get on their knees. There aren't many people who turn to the Lord. There are a lot of people now who turn to anger and hate. Where is John the Baptist calling people to repentance? Where is he in 2010? Calling people to our first love calling people to Jesus Christ. Who is getting us ready for these perilous times? We don't even know we have perilous times. What are the bishops saying in the United States? Not a word. Nobody knows what's happening. I thought the bishops were to be prophetic people that could see and say, you know what, it's time to prepare the people to get them ready for what might be happening down the road. You don't have to be a prophet to see things are falling apart, that everything is falling apart in the West, in Europe, in the United States. You don't have to be a prophet to see that. But there's not a word getting people ready. Listen to what the Bible says, because it's a very important word. It's from Ezekiel, Ezekiel 33. Listen to what it says. 
The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, speak to your people and say to them, If I bring the sword upon a land, and the people of the land take a man from among them and make him their watchman, and if this watchman sees the sword coming upon the land and blows the trumpet and warns the people, then if anyone who hears the sound of the trumpet does not take the warning and the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. The watchman heard the sound of the trumpet and did not take warning. His blood shall be upon himself. But if he had taken warning, he would have saved his life. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet so that the people are not warned and the sword comes and takes any one of them, that man is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. So you, son of man, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from his ways, and the wicked man shall die in his iniquity, his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. But if you warn the wicked one to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Who is the watchman today? Warning people. Who is the watchman? Where are the watch people? Telling us to get ready. Telling us that during these perilous times, we are to shine like stars in this crooked and perverse generation. Who is the watch people that said, we are to hold on to Jesus and that we are not to lose faith? Who is the watchman that, that speaks and says, you know, because 60 million children have been killed violently, and how we have killed people uh, at the end of life through euthanasia, and still do. We have planted violence, and we, have, we are reaping violence. Who is the watchman that warns the people? Where are they? I don't see them. Well, I'll go tell you, at least there's one. And you might think he's crazy, and maybe he is crazy. And he's a Mormon. And his name is Glenn Beck. You might think he's crazy, and maybe he is crazy, but at least he's warning people about the things that he sees. He might be absolutely wrong, but you know what? At least he's warning people. Not that they be afraid, but that they be courageous, and that they get on their knees. Imagine Glenn Beck speaking to people to get on their knees and to pray. And we do not hear repentance from our bishops. Imagine. He's a Mormon. Remember what Jesus said to the Pharisees? Can I not raise up children of Abraham from these stones? You Pharisees that come for baptism, you are a brood of vipers, snakes. Produce fruit that shows the fruit of your repentance. Where are the watchmen? We are totally oblivious. Totally oblivious. We're living in perilous times. And we are a people who have had everything, and when that everything is taken away, you know what happens? What happened yesterday? Prince Charles's car with his fiancée was barraged by a mob of people. You know what they were saying? Off with the head. Why? Because they're going to have to pay more money for tuition. The craziness has, has, has become part of the 
part of the uh, fabric of our lives. Craziness, violence. But we've killed 60 million children through legal abortion. We've planted violence and we'll reap violence unless we repent. In our own state, we've legalized gay marriage. And we've said that marriage between a man and a man is valid like a man and a woman. We've legalized it, codified it. Morality, what does that mean anymore? Is there any morality any place? Trust in God? Trust in God? How many even know what it means to put your faith in the Lord and in Jesus Christ and to trust in Him? What will happen if we who have experienced and given everything, we've been given everything, and that everything stops? And we can't have what we want. What will happen? More violence? And how will we respond to it? How will the church respond to it? In 1990, the Lord told me, at least I think it was the Lord, that there would be a shortage of food. But he said to me, but you shall see food multiplied as you give it out. As you give it out, you shall see it multiplied. In 1990, all these words seemed so foolish. But in 2010, they don't seem so foolish to me anymore. And even if I'm wrong, at least I'm warning the people that we are to shine like stars in this crooked and perverse generation. That we are to uphold our faith in Jesus Christ no matter what happens. That we are to help people that if this ever happens, we not only think about ourselves, but about others and care for them. How do we prepare we prepare on our knees without fear. For the Lord says, I will be with you always, even unto the consummation of the earth. We prepare by prayer. We also prepare by being filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Spirit of God. We're going to need the Holy Spirit more than we've ever needed the Holy Spirit before. You know, he is the spirit of martyrdom. Do you know martyrdom is something very real? Do you know that people uh, are giving their life for Jesus Christ in third world countries all around the world? Do you know that Christians are being persecuted even unto death by fanatical Muslims, fanatical Hindus? We don't even hear about it. You know why? Because all these people are poor. But they are our brothers and sisters, Catholic, Protestant, and Orthodox, and they are giving their life for Jesus Christ. They have much more faith than I have. I can speak to you, but I have not been pressed to the point of giving my life as martyr for the Lord Jesus Christ. I have not been pressed yet to that point. It says in the book of Hebrews, you have not yet come to the shedding of your blood. 
And I know that without the Holy Spirit and without God's gift, that if those things would ever happen in the United States, I know that I would need God's help. You say, they cannot happen. Don't be sure of anything anymore. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Do you know that the only faith that's worthy to be criticized and hated is Christianity and Judaism? That people are constantly hating, speaking about, cursing Christians and Jews? You can believe in witchcraft, they won't bother you. You can believe in uh, monkeys, they won't bother you. But say that you believe in Jesus Christ, they laugh at you. In New York, as you leave the Holland Tunnel, there are two big billboards. Both have the picture of the nativity scene. The atheists put be above the nativity scene this is a myth. It never happened. The Catholics put, this is reality. Isn't it interesting that Jesus is always on, on fire? Not Buddha, not Mohammed, only Jesus. I tell you why. Because he's the truth. And that no one comes to the Father except through Christ. I tell you why why people would be why people would be upset about a manger scene because if it wasn't true it would be just so sweet and would impact nobody i remember in boston common when i was a child just by the state house at the top of the common there was this beautiful manger scene so big so glorious so lit up. Now the manger scene is like this, this big now, someplace hidden in the common. The statues were bigger than me, lit up in the 60s, lit up. Now you never see that. Now the manger scene is like this, hidden someplace. Why Jesus? He never did anything wrong to anyone other than dying for us, rising from the dead, giving new life, life to those who believe. Why Jesus? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why Jesus is always on trial. Because he's the way, the truth, and the life. That's why Jesus. Why not Mohammed? Because Mohammed is dead. Why not Buddha? Buddha is dead. Why Jesus? Because he's been raised from the dead and gives new life to those who believe. I said he's been raised from the dead and gives new life to those who believe. Do you believe? Like, do you believe? Have you given your life to him? Have you? I'm talking to you. Have you given your life to him? Are you ready for these perilous days? Then pray with me, Jesus Christ, I need you. I need you. I need you more than I need my breath. I need you, Jesus, more than I need my breath. Come dwell in my heart by faith. Come dwell in my heart. Flood me with the gift of the Holy Spirit. I'm desperate for you, Lord. I said I'm desperate for you, Lord. I need you to work in my life. I need you to show yourself to me. I need you to uphold me. I have nothing to give you but my sins and my life. I surrender my life to you, O oh God. I surrender it totally, completely, entirely. Everything I am and everything I have, I give to you that you would use, that would be put at your disposal. And I ask you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. I ask you that you would flood me with the gift of the Holy Spirit. That I would never compromise 
that I would never betray you with a kiss the way Judas did. I need you, Lord. Tell you about our Christmas Eve Masses at Holy Rosary in Winthrop, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 5.30 and midnight, and then on Christmas Day at 11 o'clock in the morning, 4, 5.30 and midnight on Christmas Eve, and 11 o'clock in the morning. Also want to tell you that uh, to those who have faith, it's going to be okay. Nothing to worry about. To those who don't, you better get it. You better open the scriptures. You better put your trust in him. Because the world is about to be shaken. And I'm going to be holding on to Jesus. Because he's the only anchor that brings life. He's the only one that brings life. Only him. The Father's only Son, the one who gave his life for you and for me, who bled for you and for me, and who will come again in glory as the judge of the living and the dead. May God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God bless you.